How do I get rid of this thing? Uh, I want to read. Here we go. The words of God. It's the washing water of the word. We just thank you for the fresh brain wash today, God. Flood our body, soul, and spirit with living water. The life of God. Uh, it's funny how water and blood poured out of Jesus on the cross. Let the washing water of the word of God today wash our walk today in Jesus' name. Feeling a little bit rough in the atmosphere today, so I thought I'd just come here and uh, have a holy walk. <laughs> get washed in the washing water of his word. Get all the religious words of Pharisees condemning you and criticizing you. you got to let that all be, be washed away or any thought from any demon. <laughs> just get washed away. And we can wash the neighborhood. I'm just thinking of that Mr. Rogers song. Well, we'll just throw that, put that on the shelf somewhere. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A kick in the face. <laughs> I don't remember how it goes, but... <laughs> oh, man, I should start this stream over. Whatever, who cares? The words of God. Don't focus on my words. Let's focus on his words. The way of happiness. Psalm 119. <laughs> Me too. Let's encourage each other in the Lord today. You're only truly happy when you walk in total integrity, walking in the light of God's word, the light of God's word. Let the light of your revelation light shine through our hearts and minds the same way that we're the light of the world today, God. It's the Holy Spirit blazing through the temple of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so Holy Spirit, thank you for shining light on the words of Jesus. What joy overwhelms everyone who keeps the ways of God. Those who seek Him as their heart's passion. They'll never do what's wrong, but will always choose the paths of the Lord. God has prescribed the right way to live. Oh, He has, has He? <laughs> Let's keep reading. God has prescribed the right way to live, obeying His laws with all our hearts. How I long for my life to bring you glory as I follow each and every one of your holy precepts. Then I will never be ashamed, for I take strength from all your commandments. I will give my thanks to you from a heart of love and truth. Thank you, God, for filling our hearts filled, full to the overflowing with your love and your truth not just your truth but your love that empowers that truth in our lives and every time i learn more of your righteous judgments i will be faithful to all your word reveals so don't ever give up on me here we go the true joy how can a young man or a young woman how can a youngin stay pure only by living in the Word of God and walking in its truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit, right now for the wraparound presence of the Word of God Himself. Thank you that we are clothed in Christ. We put on the full armor of Christ. We put on the full armor of you right now in Jesus' name. And I ask you for a fresh bathing in the rivers of living water, in the washing water of your Word, and just... Thank you for empowering us with might in the inner man to destroy all the works of the devil first in our lives and in the lives of others through the testimony of what Jesus is doing and has done in our lives. I have longed for you with passion of my heart. Don't let me stray from your directions. I consider your prophecies to be my greatest treasure. And I memorize them and write them on my heart. Ooh. Yeah, let those words just go deeper into heart today like arrows of truth. <laughs> just annihilate it. Annihilate us today with the arrows of your truth today, God. To keep me from committing sins, treason against you. My wonderful God, you are to be praised above all. Teach me the power of your decrees. I speak continually. Oh, it's hold on a second. It's really hard to read with like all the text. So, uh, but I want to keep that on there. 
<laughs> I'm doing good, man. How are you guys doing? Doing the best. Fully rest in the precious word. I'll do a little. Sorry about that. I'm just new to all this streaming stuff on, uh, other than streaming Candy Crush. I just want to get into the glory a little bit deeper and see his face a little bit brighter today so that we can be changed into the image of his glory. So that we can be changed into the image of what we were in the beginning, the image of God, where there's perfect peace, perfect rest, perfect union, no distractions. We could just walk with God. And that's why, how can you make a, your way pure? By walking in the Word of God. That's not just memorizing the Bible. It's just like literally being in the person of Jesus Christ, the Word of God, the way He was before there was ever sin in the world. Yeah, good news. <laughs> we could always march boldly to the throne room of grace to see his face within us we're a mobile throne room company (laughs) glory 13 i speak continually of your laws as i recite out loud your counsel to me that's really important you know reciting out loud his counsel because it's when god speaks a word to you it says in in the scriptures that jesus opened his mouth and taught them and it's like, what, as he opened his mouth, what was in his spirit would come into an audible form and carried the, the frequencies and the glory waves of his father, what his father whispered to him when he went into the mountain to pray at night. So there's something about speaking the word of God out loud. It even says in Revelation that there's a blessing for those who do that. Blessed is he who, uh, Revelation chapter 1, I think verse 3 who uh, speaks the word out loud, I believe it's, I can't remember, I need a sip of tea, hallelujah. (laughs) I need need a sip of the living water (laughs) more than any natural drink in Jesus' name. But anyways, recite your counsel out loud. I find more joy in following what you tell me to do than in chasing after all the wealth of the world. That includes playing Candy Crush. (laughs) I enjoy your words because they're so life-giving. More than any hobby, more than anything that I could possibly ask, think, or do in this world, your words washing through me, it brings me into a deeper ecstasy and makes me fall deeper in love with you, God. So let your words come alive as we read your words. I set my heart on your precepts. I pay close attention to all your ways. My delight is found in all your laws, and I won't forget to walk in your words. The word of God is like a portal. You go through him to the Father. So when you're walking in his words, you're walking in the dimension of him and his Father, who they are in. No man has ascended into heaven, save the Son of Man which is in heaven. You can step through his words into ecstasy to be with him, the word of God. The word of God is a doorway standing open in heaven. And we have access through the precious blood of Jesus, through the ripped veil. You know how the ripped veil was a doorway for us, for mankind to come back to God, but not just that. When we rip open ourselves as the temple of the Holy Spirit, we're just ripped open by God and surrender that God comes through the temple of the Holy Spirit to touch the earth again. It's a two, a door is a two way entrance and exit. You go through it and you come to it, you know. So God comes through us and we can also go to God through the temple, which temple we are, the temple of the Holy of Holies, the Holy Living God, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives and dwells and moves and has his being in us. So if ever you're having a hard time trying to stay pure, just know that the Word of God is living and dwelling within you, and you just need to connect to Him through a heart-to-heart intimacy, like what we're doing right now. Amen. I set my heart on your precepts, on everything you say, God. Bring everything you say to our memory. Bring everything you say and have said to our hearts, and let it burn away every other word. Because they are irrelevant next to your words, God. And pay close attention to all your ways. My delight is found in all your laws, and I won't forget to walk in your words. And we know that it was the word of God where Jesus said, Come, 
it's that's what held Peter above the storms of life in the natural realm. So you can walk in his words and his words will lift you above the natural realm. The abundant life. Let me, your servant, walk in abundance of life. Hey man, is that why you press play on the video? That's why I started making the video. We're all here to look at you, Jesus. We just want to walk in the abundance of your life, God. Just take our life, take our thoughts, take our bodies and my heart and our flesh. Cry out for the living God. We, won't, we don't want a dry, dead religion. We've seen what that can do. It's worthless. It's straw that burns in the fire of our hearts burning for you. So God, we pray verse 17 right now. Let us, your servants walk in abundance of life that we may always live to obey your truth and open our eyes to see the miracle wonders hidden in your word today, God. Let our life on earth is so brief, so tutor us in the ways of your wisdom. We're continually consumed by these irresistible longings, the cravings to obey your every commandment, God. To circumcise our ears so we can hear, circumcise our hearts so we can see, circumcise our minds to be renewed by the sword of your spirit, cutting off everything that should not be there. Every worthless thought be circumcised and trimmed off today in Jesus' name. Because your displeasure rests with those who are arrogant, who think they know everything. You rebuke the rebellious who refuse your laws. Don't let them mock and scorn me or us for obeying you. For even if the princes and my leaders choose to criticize me, I will continue to serve you and walk in your plans for my life. What is the plans for God in our life? There's only one plan. It's just one thing. Just go to Jesus. That's it. <sighs> And Jesus called his disciples unto him. That's your calling. Go to Jesus. And then he'll give you power to cast out the devil just by being with him. He'll give you uh, power to trample on serpents and scorpions. He can be the prophet through you. He can be the teacher through you. He can be the pastor through you. He can be all in all and in all who surrender to his life. He can be our life. He can be the words that come through our spirit, man, in our mouths when we open it to cut, to cut hearts so that they can receive and know and understand that God is alive and God is amazing. God is not at all what the religious system has made him out to be. He's actually really fun to hang around with. He's more peaceful than any hobby. He's more intelligent than the wisdom of man and the greatest of like Shakespeare. He has a way with words. The word of God has a way with words. Yahweh, you know, <laughs> his words are so powerful. He created the heavens and the earth just by opening his mouth <laughs> and speaking what was in his heart into existence. And boom, here we are. Verse 24, your commandments are my counselors. Your word is my light and delight. Revived by the word. Lord, I'm fading away, discouraged, and lying in the dust. You ever feel like that? I can relate to this guy. God, I just feel so gross. Revive me by your word, just like you promised you would. You promised that you would, uh, we promised John 10, 10, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you may have life and life more abundantly. That life more abundantly is the well of life springing up with everlasting life. The Holy Spirit is gushing through the temples of the Holy Spirit who yield to you. Not in any works that we do, but everything that you've done that we can yield to. So we can just be free in you and you in us. So in us, God, just move and have your being. <laughs> and so we move and have our being in your being. I've poured out my life before you and you've always been there for me. So now I ask, teach me more of your holy decrees. Wow. 
did you read? I feel I'm starting to get a little bit juiced off of this. I've poured out my life before you, and you've always been there for me. So now I ask, teach me more of your holy decrees. Teach us, God, more of your holiness. Your name is holy. Teach us more of your name. Teach us the words that you've spoken to us, the life and the substance and the, the true depths of the meaning that every word carried. This, teach us the meaning of the anointing that breaks the yoke so that we can come into the depths of the person of the word of God today. Open up my understanding to your ways for your wisdom of your wisdom and I will meditate deeply on your splendor and your wonders. Right there. Understanding comes when we meditate on his splendor and his wonders. Understanding comes when our heart falls so deeply in love with Jesus. And that's all we see well, through, the, through the binoculars of our heart is just looking for him and then we see him in his glory we see him in his presence we see him in if if who he really is god is love god is our wisdom god the prince of peace is our peace the joy of the lord is our strength it's his joy coming through his body and he rejoices in his children who just want to be with him <laughs> you know this is the will that you would come to the one whom the Father has sent. Isn't it like John 6 or 7 or 8, somewhere around there? The will of God is for us just to go to Him and just to hear Jesus. So it's His will that we do hear. God, we want to do Your will right now. Today, we want to hear You deeper. We want to hear You closer and more intimate than we've ever heard You before. Because we don't want to hear the, the chatter of fools. We don't want to hear the whisperings in darkness. We want to hear the things that you speak in the light to your body, to us, your beloved. And I will meditate deeply on your splendor and your wonders. My life's strength melts away with grief and sadness. Come strengthen me and encourage me with your words. Keep me far away from what is false, God. Give me grace to stay true to your laws right now. Thank you for the grace, God, to stay true to your laws. I've chosen to obey your truth and to walk in the splendor light of all that you teach me. Lord, don't allow me to make a mess of my life, for I cling to your commands and follow them as closely as I can cling to the word of God just like they did when our hearts were burnt did not our hearts burn as he went over the scriptures with us and they clung to you because you made as though you were going to go further but it's like if you're going to go further you're taking us with you I'm, I'm going to chain myself to your pant leg. If you're going further, I'm going further with you. If you're walking on the water, I'm walking on the water with you. Even if I sink and drown to death, at least I would have made the choice to step out on the water and die for a good cause. <laughs> Maybe I would have just died to myself and my unbelief and get back up again and walk on the water. And that's a launching pad to fly through the heavens with you. I don't know. But I'm going to cling to your commands and follow them as closely as I can today, God. And for the rest of my days, that's just not be a, this is like a starting place. How to stay pure in you. I will run after you with, with delight in my heart. For you make, for you will make me obedient to your instructions. Give me revelation to the meaning of your ways. Grant it, God. Give us revelation to the meaning of your ways. We just don't want to hear about your ways. Give us the spirit of understanding today to know the depths, the height, the breadth of your ways. So we can enjoy the reward of following them fully. Give us understanding heart so that we can passionately know and obey your truth. Passionately. Not just passively, not just listen to it in a podcast, not just watch, sit back and watch sermons and, you know, wait for the anointing to touch us. No, we want to passionately follow deeply. We want to follow the person 
of the statutes, the commands, and the word of God. God, open our hearts wider today so we can just oh, more of you and and just increase the capacity for us to perceive you in your glory. Father, I will that they would see me where I am, that they may behold my glory. It is written, your prayer. So it is the will of God that we see you in your glory. Remove every distraction from our hearts, God, so we can see you in your glory, so we can be changed by you in your glory and walk with those who are in the glory and shine the light of your glory into the world. Guide me, guide us into the paths that please you. For we take delight in all that you say. Cause our hearts to bow before your words of wisdom and not the wealth of this world or anything that is in this world. Help us turn our eyes from, away from illusions so that we can pursue only that which is true, only that which is in you. Grant it, God. Drench our souls with life so we can walk in your paths. Reassure us of, the, of your promises, for we are your beloved, God. We're your servant who bow before you. Defend us from the criticisms we face. Even in our own thought life, it's the enemy speaking lies and deceptions, trying to crush our self-esteem and our trust in you. Let those voices be crushed today underneath the feet of even the least in the body of Christ. All this for just keeping your beautiful words, God. See how we long for, with cravings for more of your ways. Grant it. Ah, let your righteousness revive our spirits, God. May your tender love overwhelm us, O Lord, and for you are our Savior, and, and, and you keep your promises. I'll always have an answer for those who mock us. Because we trust in your word. We don't just have to Google something. It's written in our hearts. It's not a shallow relationship. I want the depths where it goes. Your word just, your, it's below me. It's in me. It's over my head. It's around me. Just baptize into the living, washing water of the Word of God Himself. Consumed with your Word. Just obsessed with drinking in your Word and just not drinking anything else. If you're drowning in, in water, you cannot drink anything else but the water. Just drown us in the river of life and there's no escape ever. In the name of Jesus. So that we will never forget your truth. For we rely on your precepts and we will observe your laws every moment of the day. And we'll never forget the words you say. We will walk with you in complete freedom. For we will seek to follow your every command. When we stand before kings, we will tell them the truth. When we stand before the poor, we will tell them the truth. When we stand before presidents, we will tell them the truth. When we stand before teachers, pastors, evangelists, Satanists, parents, children, any officers, we will tell them the truth. And we will never be ashamed because your truth is what sets them free from their delusions. My passion and delight is in your word. For I love what you say to me. And I know I speak for those who are hungry for you. We love what you say to us because every word you speak is spoken in love. All of your decrees. We long for more revelation of your truth, God. Grant it even more today. For we love the light of your word as we meditate on your decrees. Even on the, in the night season on our beds, when we wake up in the morning, the first thought in our minds should be Jesus. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Guide me to the coffee maker. <laughs> oh, 
I may reach out for a coffee, but I'm looking for a drink from the living God. <laughs> because this coffee may pass away, but your words will never pass away. <laughs> your, words, your words revive my spirit more than a cappuccino or an espresso in a dry and weary land. <laughs> Oh, Lord, never forget the promises you made to us, for they are our hope and confidence. And that's how we wage warfare, by speaking your spirit-filled words. In all my affliction, I find great comfort in your promises, for they have kept me alive. That's not just existence, but alive in the spirit. <laughs> Your decrees, your words, oh, they're so filled with enough anointing to destroy all the works of the devil in my life and overflow into the lives of those around me, even my neighbors. Let them taste the overflow of the anointing and the abundance, love, and life that comes through your words, God. They have kept me alive. No matter how bitterly the proud mockers speak against me, I refuse to budge from your precepts. No matter how many knowledge of good and evil posts I see, I'm not going to remove myself from what you taught me from your glory. Your words are more true by the Spirit than any other word quoted apart from the Spirit. I cling to your Spirit-filled words, which are my bread and my food and my life. You can born again by the Word of God. The Word of God taking root in our spirit. We don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth. That's our food. That's our strength. That's our, that's our guidance. We're not led by anything else, but by your spirit-filled words. Coming and taking root in our hearts and then producing fruit of the Holy Spirit to help us see, taste, understand, and strengthen us and know that we are in the way. That we can also test ourselves to know that we are in the faith. Do we not know that Jesus Christ is in us? Lest we're looking to the illusions of the outer realm. But the inner realm, it's Emmanuel, God within us. God with us, who will never leave us, never forsake us. That first love gate, if it's been rusted shut, just I ask you just to pressure wash it today with the washing water of your word. <laughs> let the hinges explode off of the gate and let the gate just be flung wide open the way it is. Your gate's wide open in heaven and according to Revelation. And I saw a door standing open in heaven. We go through you to see the Father, but you come through us so others can see you. Let us always have open hearts to you, God, just like your door is always open in heaven for us during this season of time. Your revelation light is eternal. Oh, man. Let me just park there for five seconds. Did you know that when you meditate on the, on the things that God has done in your life through the anointing, and you meditate on it, you can get hit by that anointing and it breaks you free from your present place so that you can go further and deeper into places in the anointing. <laughs> because that anointing is eternal. Your revelation light is eternal. That anointing doesn't fade. Just like the man who was thrown into Elisha's bones came back alive again. That anointing raises the dead and brings it into life. So let's bring all of our dead things into the life of God today, right now. God, we present our life before you on your altar right now. We bring our thought life and we just place it on the altar right now in Jesus' name. This is yours, God. Blowtorch it. <laughs> we place our bodies on the living altar right now. The altar of God. These bodies belong to you. If there's anything in there that is not on earth as it is in heaven, let it be removed in the name of Jesus. We bring our spirits before your throne, God, and we just lay on the altar and we ask you if there's anything perverse in our spirit, anything that's not right and not in perfect union with you, I ask you to remove it now in the name of Jesus. Any soul ties, any hooks into the world, any hooks into the lust of the flesh, any hooks into religious spirits, any hooks into the pride of life, just let those hooks be circumcised and cut off by the sword of your spirit now in the name of Jesus so that we can see you clearly. Clearly, 
No more distractions in the name of Jesus. Your revelation light is eternal. I'm encouraged every time I think about your truth. Whenever I see the wicked breaking your laws, I feel horrible. I was watching a movie called Jeremiah a long time ago as a brand new believer. And Jeremiah was walking around and he's looking at all the people and they're worshiping these false idols. And oh, it broke my heart. Like I just started bawling my eyes out. I mean, I'm just watching a movie. And I know like, oh man, why bow to lesser things? Why bow to a statue? Why bow, pour out your adoration to these dead things? When the living God has made himself so abundantly clear before us that we can march boldly to the throne of womb of grace where if we're in, in time of need we could just come to him and receive his power to overcome anything in this world which is his word and i know how this guy feels whenever i see the wicked breaking your laws i feel horrible not for my sake almost not even for their sake but for God's sake, for how he feels towards them, that he's made the provision that they won't even look to him, but they're still looking to the death for pleasure. It's, it, like, it broke my heart for not, not because of them worshiping, but for God's heart broken for them. God's gone through so much, guys. <laughs> in Psalm, I mean, in Genesis chapter 6, we, we destroyed his heart. He just looked at his creation and is so grieved in his heart because all we thought about was wickedness continually. But his heart still, he still stretched out his heart in the form of Jesus Christ. He was ripped to shreds, bleeding and water and blood gushing out of him. And that was God's visible representation of his heart. Jesus Christ ripped to shreds and he knew that was going to happen. He still held it out there. And Jesus Christ still even outstretched his arms for anyone who would come to him so that he can embrace them in a hug and pull them into himself and present that person back to God, the creator. Thank you, God. There's nobody as patient as you. There's no one as loving as you. There's no one, but we can be like you to the measure that we surrender every part of our being to you. And that you live, move, and have your being through that part that we surrender to you. So I just ask, because you gave all, that we could give all back to you, God. And remind us of this prayer. Remind us tomorrow. Remind us the day after tomorrow. When we go about our daily lives, we wake up and walk to the coffee maker, or make a tea, or whatever, fill up a glass full of juice. This prayer that we said we give our all to you, God. Because you gave your all for us. Because you gave our all to us, we can give our all to you. Because you first loved us, we can love you too. Because you first loved us who were in rebellion towards you, and some even considered you an enemy. Even while we considered you an enemy, you loved us and set us free. So that we could love our enemies too. And that they could be set free from that anointing touching their hearts. Instead of retaliating and whipping Saul spears, we can give them a piece of the mind of Christ. As I journey through life, I put all your statutes to music. They become the theme of my joyous songs. Throughout the night, I think of you, dear God. I treasure your every word to me. I treasure your every wool. Throughout the night, I think of you, dear God. Throughout the night, I think of you, dear God. Did you know that God thinks of us throughout the night too? Sometimes you spend your time pouring out your heart to God during the day and he'll wake you up in the middle of the night with waves of his presence and you'll, you'll catch him watching you. That's what a parent is like, a loving father. He watches over his children. Throughout the night, I think of you, dear God. I treasure your every word to me. All this joy is mine as I follow your ways. My heart is devoted to you. You are my satisfaction, Lord, and all that I need. 
world. How do you stay pure? You are my satisfaction, Lord, and all that I need. So I'm determined to do everything you say. With all my heart, I seek your favor. Pour out your grace on me as you promised. When I realize that I'm going astray, I turn back to obey your instructions. I give all to follow your revelation light. I will not delay to obey. I give all to follow. How do you stay pure? I give all. I give all. I give my all to follow your revelation light. I will not delay to obey. Even when temptations encircle me with evil. I think that comma is in the wrong place. Let's, let's just remove that comma right there. Let's remove that period from verse 60. And let's read this as one sentence. From 60 to 61. I give my all to follow your revelation light. I will not to obey even when temptations encircle me with evil. Period. Let's read that one more time. Let's get it deep in our hearts. I give my all to follow your revelation lights. I will not delay to obey even when temptations encircle me with evil. Let's try reading this now. I won't forget for a moment to follow your commands. In the middle of the night, I awake to give thanks to you because of your revelation light so right and true. Anyone who loves you and bows in obedience to your words will be my friend. <laughs> He's probably talking about the angels who obey his words. <laughs> I got lots of invisible friends. <laughs> Anyone who loves you and bows in obedience to your words will be my friend. Give me more revelation of your ways, for I see your love and tender care everywhere. Your extravagant kindness to me makes me want to follow your words even more. Teach me how... Ooh, shut that up. Let's go back to that one. Your extravagant kindness to me. I was just picturing Pharisees in my mind right now. Usually I'm really aggressive with them and maybe I'm supposed to calm down a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. Holy Spirit. You be yourself towards these people, God. I deal with them a lot. But, my Bible says, Your extravagant kindness to me makes me want to follow your words even more. There's a time to be severe and there's a time to be kind. There's a time to release the spirit of the fear of the Lord. There's a time to release the love of God. There's a time to release comfort and there's also a time to release the lion. Help us, God, with your wisdom to know what season and what time and what, what each person needs to to grow and, ex and to follow your words even more. We're not here to please man. We're here to please you by releasing you upon man, whichever form or way you want so desire, God. Because it is, they do get the shepherd's staff sometimes. Sometimes, you know. Hallelujah. Anyways, verse 66. Teach me how to make good decisions. And give me revelation light, for I believe in your commands. Hey, that's what I just prayed. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yes, God, teach us how to make good decisions. And give us revelation light, for we believe in your commands. Before we were humbled, we used to always wander astray. <laughs> right? But now we see the wisdom of your words. Oh, Shabba. Everything you do is beautiful, flowing from your goodness. Teach us the power of your wonderful words. Right there. Not just your words, God. Teach us the power. Teach us the anointing. Teach us the glory within your wonderful words that makes the words true. Verse 
No one can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit who makes Jesus Lord in our life. Many people say Jesus is Lord, but it's not true in their lives, so it's not true. <clears throat> it's not true for them. It's a true statement, but there will be no anointing on that because it's not true in their lives. But when you say Jesus is Lord by the Holy Spirit, it's like pfft, he confirms it with your spirit and also in the spirits of people around you that those words are true. It's the Holy Spirit who makes words true. Because <laughs> devils repeat the scriptures. But Jesus Christ was full of the Holy Spirit. Whoa, and he quoted scriptures. And we need to be full of the Holy Spirit too. Grant it, God, that we would always be filled with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for teaching us your ways, how to remain filled with the Holy Spirit and full of of the power of your wonderful words. Proud boasters make up lies about me because I'm passionate to follow all that you say. All that you say. I used to, I find this scripture would jump out when I'd read about, and Moses did what the Lord said or stuff like that, you know, and Moses obeyed the word of the Lord and Moses, you know, he would just, he obeyed what God said and that qualified him to be a leader, to hear and obey, hear and obey. Many people obey the, the Bible, but do they, oh, Shabbat, <laughs> but are they hearing the spirit of the word of God? Pharisees obeyed the Bible to the, to the T, like they had all these different commandments and even went into extremism. But when the word of God spoke to them, they crucified him. It's the spirit that is the power within the words. It's the wisdom of his words, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the seven spirits of God, filling every word that, that teaches us the ways of God. Proud boasters make up lies about us because we're passionate to follow all that you say. Their hearts are dull and void of feelings, but I find my true treasure in your truth. Did you know that when you obey the truth, it circumcises your heart? It makes you more tender and raw to Jesus. I'll give this quick testimony real quick. I, w I went shopping and I, I just heard this random phrase like it was a scripture. I was, I was grocery shopping and it's something about something about the poor. I don't even remember the scripture. You know, something about helping the poor. I can't even remember what it was, like a proverb or something. And I was looking at the noodles in my in the grocery aisle, and I and I saw the noodles, and I'm like, oh, does God want me to buy some noodles for some poor people or something? You know, because I used to do that. I'd go buy mittens, and I would just hand them out to people, and you know, give them tracks and stuff like that, and run away in the fear of man and stuff. You know, just just in my newbie, you know, learning how to walk with God days. But this was later on, and and I I just heard this scripture faintly in my mind but there was a drop of anointing on it like god does you want me to feed the poor i didn't think anything of it so i just kept shopping and then as i was i just forgot about it and i can't remember if i bought the noodles or not and anyways i'm, I'm taking the shopping cart and i'm pushing it to to my car and then i hear this lady hey uh, can i have that can i have that that loony for that, from the cart please i'm hungry <laughs> And I, and I said, like, or I think it was a toonie or something. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I can't give that to you. It's not, a, it's not real money. And it's like, oh, but here, here, I can give you this. And I reached in my, my pocket. I had about $5 worth of change. You know, a couple toonies and some quarters and stuff like that. And, and I just gave her the money. And she's like, oh, thank you. God bless you. And, and, then, uh, and then as I sat in my car and I got... I got I was thinking like, oh yeah, that scripture, helping the poor or something like that. And then I was like, oh man, this person must have heard God. And like, you know, and I was like, I thought, I want to hear God like this person. And I drove home. And, and then when I got home, I, I sat down and I, and I put in a Zelda game. I was going to play Breath of the Wild. And then the presence of God sat on me as I'm playing video games for three days straight. Because I obeyed this faint scripture, just barely obeying it. It's like, oh yeah, of course, here, have this change, you know, not really thinking anything about it. 
I, I got was so tender to the Lord for like three days. As I was playing this video game, Revelation was just coming. Jesus was whispering secrets to me about the video game. It's like, yeah, Chris, you know, we need to, you know, Link is his job is to save the bride. He's the link to bring her to the Father, you know. <laughs> He's like, yeah, Chris, you know that master sword? When you use the master sword, you can slay a lot of pigs too. Because <laughs> you got to slay a lot of pigs before you can set the bride free. She was trapped. She was imprisoned in that in that jail cell of uh, Ganon or whatever. He had this 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 gross stuff. It was I was just like revelation after revelation. God just whispering things to me on just because I was I obeyed the word of God that was barely obeyable. It's like He set us up to bless us. It's like God sets us up, but if sometimes we're so focused on the natural realm that we miss it. He wants to bless his children, and you know, <laughs> and one of the ways is just to, you know, verse 70, their hearts are dull and void of feelings. Why? Because they're so filled by focusing on the world and filled with dust. The well of salvation is, is just filled with dust and dirt. But when you obey his word, but I find my treasure in your truth, just obeying the word of God in the smallest way possible. It's like God kind of like tricks you into obedience so he can bless you, you know? It's not even like tricks you. That's the wrong word, but you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Three days of just intimacy with God. God, I have to ask you, to release that grace on everyone who popped in on this video that you would just give them grace to sit in your presence for like the manifest presence that I was sitting like for three days straight minimum. Just so you can whisper the secrets of the kingdom to our hearts. And whatever, if it's through a cereal box, it's through its video game, through reading a book, through watching a movie, it doesn't matter. The word of God has a way with words. Anyways, verse 71. I was just remembering that as we read that. The punishment you brought me through was the best thing that could have happened to me, for it taught me your ways. I don't know about that, but... <laughs> One of the books I really didn't like for the longest time is the book of James. It sounds like he's being so negative, man. <laughs> but it's true. The father disciplines those he loves. Chastises us. But so many of us just want to remain in our childish rebellion. I want to go deeper with God, though. I hate rebellion because it blocks me from walking in intimacy with God. Anyways, we're 72. The words you speak to me are worth more than all the riches and wealth in the world. And why do we seek everything else other than his words? Oh man, that word is a diamond right there. The words you speak to me are worth more than all the riches and wealth in the world. Thank you for circumcising our hearts and minds and bodies today to hear your word, God. Your very hands have held me and made me who I am. Give me more revelation light so that I may learn to please you more. Grant it, God. May all your lovers see how you treat me and be glad, for your words are entwined within my heart. Oh. I'm getting a little bit intoxicated off that verse. Right, let's read it one more time. May all your lovers see how you treat me and be glad, for your words are entwined within my heart. It's like God just ties like a braid of his words through, through our hearts so that our words can be entwined within his words so that we could just be one with the word of God. Lord, I know that your judgments are always right. Even when it's me you judge, you're still faithful and true. Send your kind mercy kiss to comfort me, your servant, just like you promised you would. Love me tenderly so I can go on. 
For I delight in your life-giving truth. Shame upon the proud liars for how they oppress me. All because of my passion for your precepts. May all your lovers follow me as I follow the path of your instruction. Make me passionate and wholehearted to fulfill your every wish. Who's ever prayed that? God, make us passionate and wholehearted to fulfill your every wish. Oh man, we always give you our, God, I need this. God, I, God, help me with this. We're so needy. I know that I am. I don't know about you guys. You're probably all arrived with glowing faces, but <laughs> I'm immature. Look at this. Make us passionate and wholehearted to fill your, fill your every wish, God. Help me see this from now on, from this day forth, God, that I want to fulfill your every wish. Let us fulfill your every desire, God. Let us fulfill your every wish. Everything that you wanted from when you saw us and you released us into our mother's womb to become a child. Every desire, every dream, every wish, everything that you've ever had, every motive of your heart when you sent us into our mother's womb and knit us into our mother's womb. That. I want to fulfill that, God. I want to fulfill that. I want to fulfill your every wish. Let us fulfill your every desire, even unto the cross, even into the glory, even into you know, great joy, great expectations, and great, great peace, even into the risk of being crucified and slandered and spit upon, but choosing to walk in your truth, choosing to have your spirit gush through us and not give them a piece of our mind, but the mind of Christ to set them free. God, I want to fulfill all your wishes. Grant it today, God. Grant it evermore for the rest of our days that we would fulfill your wishes, that we would fulfill your every wish so that I'll never be ashamed of myself. I'm lovesick with yearnings for more of your salvation. For my heart is entwined with your word as your word is entwined with my heart. Let your word just be nothing but my heart. <laughs> all, when I look at my heart, all I want to see is your word coming out of there. All I want to see when I look at my heart is the word of God. Because blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And the word of God is God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. <laughs> And he was with God in the beginning. I want to be like that. The way you were with God in the beginning. In God. Around God. Through God. And God through you. And entwined as one spirit. Yahweh. I consume with longings for your promises. So I ask. When will they all come true? Oh. When can we fulfill all the desires of your heart, God? Pour upon us the ability to fulfill the desires of your heart. My soul feels dry, shriveled, useless and forgotten, but I will never forget your living truth. How much longer must I wait until you punish my persecutors for I'm lo- persecutors for I'm lo- I'm your loving servant. Arrogant men who hate the truth and never obey your laws have laid a trap for my life. They don't know that everything you say is true. So they harass me with their lies. Help me, Lord. They've nearly destroyed my life, but I refuse to yield. I still live according to your word. Revive me with your tender love and spare my life by your kindness. And I will continue to obey you. Standing firm in the heavens and fastened to eternity is the word of God. Because that's where the heavens and eternity came out of. Everything's held together by the power of your word, Father. 
Now you hold us together by the power of your word in you. Hold us together, the body of Christ, together in the power of your word, Lord. Hold us deeper in in the realms of your glory, in your word, to project the living God into the world so that it can be on earth as it is in heaven, the way that you desire when you pray. Put the same desires in us, God. Father, I pray that they would behold me, Jesus said, that they would behold my glory, that they would be with me where I am. God, please answer Jesus' prayer right now. I want to behold Jesus where he is. Ah. I want to behold Jesus, Father, where he is. That they would behold me in my glory. The glory that I had with you before the world was. Why you Watching, but I don't know. (laughs) 
Oh, I can't seem to get my glasses clean. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's just hunger, man. <laughs> it is written that blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Don't be surprised if they're getting filled with his righteousness. How can a young man make his way pure or a young woman? By walking in the word of God and taking heed, paying attention to all of his words that are laced with anointing and glory in his person. Listen, you, Jesus was talking to religious people. He said, you search the scriptures and you think that in them you have eternal life. But it's the very scriptures that you're reading that point to me. Yet you won't come to me and have this life. The scriptures are just a doorway to go into the realms of glory to perceive the person of God. So when we read his words, it should be like just like igniting a fire in our hearts just to get the one who created the heavens and the earth. Just to get a little bit closer to him. To remove all the veils over our mind, all the veils over our heart, and all the veils off of our bodies, so we can be completely obsessed and consumed with the living God. Nothing is more pleasurable to an entire <laughs> to a person than being filled with the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead to come alive. In Him, to know Him, to experience God more than just reading about Him. That's what the words are there for. So we can step through the Word of God to be with God. And so that God, He has made us His living epistles. And He can step through us and touch the hearts who have gone cold through what Satan has put into the world these deceptions and these lies and these trickeries, anything that twists the way God really looks and the way he really is. Jesus Christ came to make all those crooked paths straight back to the Father through him, which is the anointing that leads us into the glory, which is the person of God, where we're changed by beholding him. You're not changed by memorizing the scriptures like the Pharisees who murdered the word of God. We're not changed by trying to make ourselves better. <laughs> We're changed by looking at him with a burning heart and him coming through our burning hearts as we obey his every word. And that's the place where you begin to walk with God. Don't tell me you're walking with God if there's no glory or if there's no anointing. It's just all in the brain and theology. The Pharisees did not walk with God. But the disciples who were fishermen, they did. I would rather walk with God and not really know anything but be right in my heart, in my spirit towards God, than to have memorized the scriptures. The scriptures I love, but they point to Him. The scriptures are a doorway to Him. And the, and the steps we take are, are it, it, it's, it's faith and the magnetism is our love and His love drawing us. You know what's really changed me in the past? It wasn't being able to quote scriptures to people. It was laying on the floor, bawling my eyes out because I wanted more of God. Because when I experience God in that place, it's like, oh my gosh, this is you. This is, this is you. Oh, and you see him who he is in part because if you were to see him for who he 
it will take eternity as he unravels himself through revelation, through burning hearts to see who he really is. Every time the seraphim see him, they're like, holy, because he's holy. They see an aspect of the love of God and they're like, holy, that is unconditional love that you would do that for such a wicked man. And then they see the wisdom of God. (laughs) Yeah, holy. And then he sees, they see that puny, surrendered vessels like us can reflect the eternal God. And it's like, holy, how is that possible? These people were so depraved in their own ways, thinking evil thoughts continually. They grieved your heart, yet you still chose to outstretch your heart and let them rip your heart to shreds. Holy, that is unconditional love. That is holiness. Holiness are not the things we do. Holiness is seeing Christ shine through you. Holiness is being so full of holes. (laughs) (laughs) that you're crucified. He's gushing through your hands. He's gushing through the crown of thorns that was placed upon your head as you were crucified with him, as you released the mind of Christ. He's gushing through your walk where that nail went through his feet. He's gushing through the side. He's gushing through his bride. Living water in the life of his blood. Life is in the blood. He's gushing his life through his bride that came through his side to touch the earth, to make it on earth as it is in heaven. Life more abundantly where the angels obey his every word and so do we. Not because we have to, because we're so in love and every time we obey his word and we go from another level of sensitivity to him, faithfulness in the word of God. Standing firm in the heavens and fastened to eternity is the word of God. Your faithfulness flows from one generation to the next. All that you created sits firmly in place to testify of you. God, never let us testify of ourselves, but what you've done through us. We only want to testify of you, just like (laughs) all that you created. Sits firmly in place to testify of you. By your decree, everything stands at attention for all that you have made serves you. Because your words are my deepest delight. I didn't give up. When all else was lost, that means that his word is our hope. He's the hope. He's the anchor for our soul. He's, he's the hope that, that, he's the hope sail that just helps us get carried by the Holy Ghost to the shores of grace where we can sit face to face where he's enthroned. We never have to travel in outer space. The kingdom of God is within us, and it's by grace that we can see his face. Through a burning heart, all he requires of us, hunger. With money on the earth, we can buy things, because that's the currency of the earth. The currency of heaven is hunger. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled with righteousness. What you hunger for is what what you draw like a magnet to yourself. You're hungering for God. You're going to see God closer. But we get our wells of salvation filled with dust by hungering for other things. And we've all done it. There's no condemnation. It's just there's a better way. 
How hungry can we get for God? I have all that God will ever need. Good. <laughs> Why is your face not shining then? Like Moses. Can I just ask you that? How come your heart's not burning like the disciples who walk with him on the road? Why are you not clinging to his pant legs that he'd make as though he's going to go further, but you just let him go? I just want to lock myself, chain myself to his heart. And just melt the key with a fire that is so hot that comes from his heart that I can never escape. One time I was driving in my car and I was on my way to drop off my daughter at school. And in the Old Testament, I read about how they, the servants or the slaves, they, they, if they wanted to become part of the family, they'd go through this ritual of they would take the slave and they would nail his his ear through to the door and they become his slave for life if he wants to join the family and I'm like God that's what I want I want you to take my ear right now crucify me to Jesus Christ just he's the door just crucify my hearing so that I can only hear you I don't want to hear any other voice just crucify me to, with Christ Crucify me to the door so that I am ever his slave. And I cannot leave the door. I cannot be distant from the door. All I can hear is what the door is speaking to me. Because I belong to the door and I'm his for life. And as I did this little act, I just took the hammer of his word. His hammer is like, his word is like a hammer that breaks in pieces, it is written in Jeremiah. I took the, the hammer of his word and I just, I just symbolically smashed my ear to the door. And as I did that, I felt the anointing ooze through my skin, through my flesh. Ah. And I got so wasted in my car. Drive. I could drink and drive at the same time on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. And I drive better when I drink <laughs> the heavenly substance of Christ. And that was a symbolic gesture that I made that I was only want to hear your words, God. Every other word, if it doesn't have this anointing that's gushing through my skin, it's not you. I don't care if it's a satanic Pharisee quoting a scripture. It's got to have the anointing that breaks the yoke and empowers me to walk in the word. But I, because I am your slave and I know your voice because you are the prince of peace and I am the voice of another. We will not follow. It's those who are led by the Bible that are the sons of God. Oh, that's not what the Bible says. It's those who are led by the spirit are the sons of God. And the Bible is a doorway to get to him. His word is a doorway. The word of God. He's the door standing open in heaven. I'm starting to repeat myself. So I'm going to go back to the words. Because your words are my deepest delight. I didn't give up when all else was lost. I can never forget the profound revelations you've taught me. For they have kept me alive more than once. I can attest to that. Lord, I'm all yours. You are my savior. I have sought to live my life pleasing to you for though evil men waited in ambush to kill me, I will set my heart before you to understand more of your ways. Just want to understand more of your ways. I just want to hear your voice again, more deeply, more intimate, more. I want the rebukes as much as the encouragement, God, because your rebukes steer me towards you as much as the encouragement steers me towards you. I welcome your rebukes. I welcome your judgments. I welcome your encouragement all equally. 
because it's you speaking to me. And I only want to obey your statutes, judgments, and everything so that the Word of God can be completely formed in us. Our Heavenly Father, God, let your kingdom come today in our earth suits as it is in heaven where we obey your perfect word, where we can hear you. Every angel hears your words and obeys your words. It is written in Psalm 103 that they obey your, the, your word. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. Let my will be tossed into the fire. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That means flawlessly. <laughs> it may be wobbly on the earth, but, <laughs> but if it's in earth as it is in heaven, it will be done. <sighs> Give us today our daily bread of your presence, God. And we choose to forgive all those who have sinned against us. We release forgiveness upon them to set us free <laughs> so that we can forgive everyone who throws stones and spears at us effortlessly if they whip a spear at us it's just going to put a hole there and a glitch of glory is going to spill out on them so they can be set free hallelujah because when jesus was crucified surely this was a man of god what did, what did the soldiers say their eyes were opened to recognize that he was more than just a man Just the regular people. No one has spoken like this man. Let that be said of those, of your lovers, God. Like this is not normal. This is this is this is different from anything I've ever heard before because there's life. There's there's a there's a personality within those words that are giving those words life, and it's making my heart come alive. I will set my heart before you to understand more of your ways. I've learned that there is nothing perfect in this imperfect world except for your words. For they bring such fantastic freedom into my life. Oh, how I love and treasure the revelation of your word. Throughout the day, I fill my heart with its light. Whoa. Oh, how I love and treasure the revelation of your word. Throughout the day, I fill my heart with its light. Ha 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 ha. I fill my heart with the very thing that drives out darkness. I fill our hearts with the very words that removes all deception. I fill my heart with your words that removes every trace of darkness of the fall, every trace of deception, every lie that I believe. Your word. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free from everything of darkness, because in your truth is the revelation light of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, gush through everything, every single word that we are reading here today, from this point on, throughout the rest of this song. By considering your commands, I have an edge over my enemies. I would even say that's a double edge. <laughs> By considering your commands, I have a double-edged sword over the necks of my enemies. <laughs> For I take seriously <laughs> everything you say. How do you know you take it seriously? Because it's burning in your heart. I have given, <laughs> you have given me more understanding though than those who teach me. What is that? Sounds like pride, bro. Nope. It's the spirit of understanding is greater than any teacher on earth can bring. The best teacher in this world is the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to teach us how to come into his world and live there daily. 
That's what he means by, you have given me more understanding than those who teach me. Because understanding comes to the heart by the Holy Spirit. Who lives within every word that Jesus speaks. For I've absorbed your eye-opening revelation. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see. You have graced me with more insight than the old sages. Because I have not failed to walk in the light of your ways. I just feel some anointing on that. I refuse. Oh, let's read it again then. You have graced. God, thank you right now for the grace to have more insight than the old sages, whatever that is. <laughs> the gray haired wisdom talkers who have uh, wisdom through things they walk through in life. But we want the wisdom of walking in your life that comes through the radiation of your presence, God. <laughs> the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you and you alone. Because I have not failed to walk in the light of your ways. He is the way. I refuse to bend my morals with te when temptation was before me so that I could become obedient to your word. I refuse to turn away from difficult truths for you yourself have taught me to love your words. Why would he teach us to love his words? Because the word of God said to us, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And when you keep his commandments, you can ask whatever you will, because it won't be your will. It'll be the Father's will coming through your surrender heart and mind. So you can ask whatever you will, and it'll be given to you. <laughs> ask whatever you want. At whatever? Yeah. That sounds a little bit like name it and claim it. Well, no, 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 no. You got to go fulfill the rest of the John 15 to get to that. I am the vine. You are the branches. Every branch that abides in me. Whoever has that abiding in the anointing and the glory. Whoever's abiding in Jesus Christ in Psalm 91. Whoever abides in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty or something like that. No plagues. <laughs> You abide in his words. That double-edged sword just comes through you effortlessly. It's abiding in the presence of God, abiding in the glory, abiding in his person, abiding in his spirit-filled word. We were worshiping one time for hours. I used to go uh, to this, uh, I don't know if it's a church or a building. It's a youth group thing that my friend, he, he was running the place, and we would go there. We worship for like, you know, four to, <laughs> you know, 10 hours, hours at a time, just no sermons, no nothing, just worship. We want, to, we want to pour out our hearts to God. And then one time these old ladies came, a bunch of, a big crowd, like, I don't know, maybe 40 people or so showed up. And it was a hard atmosphere. I, I worship with everything within me. I can only experience the anointing though. I couldn't break through into the glory. And it was frustrating. And I told them about a couple heavenly experiences. And it just felt like my words would go out. And it wasn't taking root in the hearts of the people. It was just, it would go out into the atmosphere and just sizzle. I didn't understand it until now. Until a little bit later, I mean. And then after that, it was, we worshiped some more. And then we went home. And as soon as I stepped out of the building, all this witchcraft just came right up to me. It was disgusting. It went from like, didn't feel like anything. We had an okay meeting. It was okay. And then poof, witchcraft. How do you know it's witchcraft? Because it just feels like barbs on you. Everything disgusting. It hits you right in the stomach, your spirit, man. All over the atmosphere. And so, I don't know if anyone else felt it. All I said was this. I rebuke witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Instantly. Because we spent time in the secret place of the Most High God. Angels just, just 
instantly, like one second of warfare, dismantled that witchcraft, ripped it to shreds, and it, the battle was over. <laughs> one second. And that impressed me. It was Psalm 91. It was also John uh, 14 and 15. It's like just you're abiding in that secret place of the Most High. You're abiding in the anointing. You're pouring your heart out, uh, heart out to God. The battle is the Lord's. Well, yeah. Focus on the Lord. And, and then when the demons show up, just, yeah, just get out of here, devil, in Jesus' name. I'm focusing on the Lord. <laughs> you know, you're not going to be distracted by you. And it's like the battle was so fast and so quick, and it was just over, just like that. Boom. It shocked me. Usually I thought I'd have to pray in tongues for like 15 minutes and do a couple, you know, some spit flying. But there is a better way. It's just pouring out your heart to Yahweh. Anyways, I can't remember why I said that. I refused to bend my morals when temptation was before me so that I could become obedient to your word. I don't know, that was just out there for someone, whatever. Holy Spirit. I refuse to turn away from difficult truths. For you yourself have taught me to love your words. How sweet are your living promises to me. Yeah, they're living promises. They're not just some highway in the byway. Maybe one day when I die, the promises of God are yes and so be it. Sweeter than honey is your revelation light. For your truth is the source of my understanding, not the falsehood of those who don't know you, which I despise. I don't think he's talking about the people. I think he's talking about the falsehoods that come through the people. For your truth is the source of my understanding, not the falsehoods. The falsehoods, they cover you and cover you in darkness. It's like a false hood. It tries to cover you from walking in the heavens. But when you come into Christ, the veil is taken away. The hood is taken off. There is nothing separating you from the living God in Christ. You can throw off the hood. All falsehoods of those who don't know you, which I despise. Truth's shining light guides me in my choices and decisions. The revelation of your word makes my pathway clear. To live my life by your righteous rules has been my holy and lifelong commitment. I'm bruised and broken, overwhelmed by it all. Breathe life into me again by your living word. Lord, receive my grateful thanks and teach me more how to please you. Amen. Even though my life hangs in the balance, I'll keep following what you've taught me no matter what. The ungodly have done their best to throw me off track, but I'll not deviate from what you've told me to do. Everything you speak to me is like joyous treasure filling my life with gladness. I have determined in my heart to obey whatever you say fully and forever. I despise those who can't keep commitments. For I passionately love your revelation light. You're my place of quiet retreat and your wraparound presence becomes my shield as I wrap myself into your word. You know, that wraparound presence is true. One time I was just driving in my car listening to a son of God preach the word of God and the anointing came through him as I was driving through my car and it wrapped around me like a shield. And when I had to talk to these people who were demon possessed, I could feel the demon, but it was bouncing off of this shield of glory. He became my shield as I wrapped myself into his word coming through a son of God. Go away, leave me, all you workers of a wickedness, for you can't stop me from following every command of my God. Lord, strengthen my inner being by the promises of your word so that I may fulfill, so that I may live faithful and unashamed for you. Lift me up and I will be safe. Empower me to live every moment in the light of your ways. Do you want that? Ask. No, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. Ask and you shall receive and stuff like that. Lift me up. Jesus Christ came down to bring us up, didn't he? Remember in the burning bush? I came down to bring you up. 
Jesus Christ came down to the lowest places to bring us up to the highest places. That's the place he's talking about. Lift me up into heavenly places in Christ, in the glory realms, in his peace, right? I feel it right now. And I will be safe. The only safe place in this world is in Christ, in his world. Empower me to live every moment in the light of your ways. Empowerment comes by hearing and obeying his word by the spirit. Lord, you reject those who reject your laws, for they fool no one by them but themselves. The wicked are thrown away, discarded, and valueless. That's why I keep loving all your laws. My body trembles in holy awe of you, leaving me speechless, for I'm frightened of your righteous judgments. So many people, my mom used to shake. She was an intercessor. She would just start shaking and baking when the presence of God came. It's scriptural. My body trembles in holy awe of you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've only had that happen a couple times where I'm shaking and I, and I can't stop it. There's just too much power. It's like, as a, as a little boy, I plugged my, I, I took a hairpin and I stuck it in one of the grounds of the, of, in the bank. Under, I was like three or four years old and I, I felt that. I felt the shaking. There was a lot of power going through me. I didn't die. <laughs> I could have, but God had plans for me. And another time I was in a meeting and I met the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And I was shaking so powerfully and I tried to stop my knees from shaking. My whole body started shaking. That happened a couple times when I met the fear of the Lord. I love the spirit of the fear of the Lord because it, it purif he purifies your thought life right then and right there. You realize that everything outside of him is, it's like it needs his holiness to be pure. You know, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. All they'll see is uh, their own mirage of the Lord. That's why to come into holiness, you got to come into him and may be made whole, get renewed in the spirit of your mind by the circumcision of the cutting away of the flesh thoughts, the delusion thoughts, and let your heart burn away the wood, the hate, and the stubble, and just heat up that sword and <laughs> sharpen it, smack it, smash with the hammer. You know, <laughs> once I've had this vision and I saw the Lord, he was working on something and uh, it was a sword. And he's, I saw the Lord just heating up this sword. And then he would dip it in the washing water of the word. That's the fire of God burning in our hearts. And then he would place it and he'd take the, did not like the hammer of, the, <laughs> oh gosh, help me Jesus. And he was smashing this sword, burning away, breaking away all the chaff. And I realized that sword was us, his body, living epistles. You know, written by the finger of God. It's like the more you got smashed on the by the word of God, the more purified and refined you became. That was, that's because whenever you get smashed by the word of God, you see him. It's like we go from glory to glory by ever beholding him, by taking on his image, by seeing him. And he was... It's like it all, the fire of his word burns in our hearts and then we get all heated up and then he dips us in the washing water of the word. Like you can't just have, you know, it's, it's amazing to stare at him and get burning in your hearts. But then we've got to get our souls anchored too in the word of God, the written word, the logos. And then it, it, it feels like, man, this is kind of getting dry. Jesus, you, what do I do? Uh, I feel like I'm getting hard and I don't, I'm like seeking you anymore. This, this scripture is getting boring. I feel like I memorized like this entire book. And he takes his ha this hammer, <laughs> just gets you smashed again. And I've seen that every time, every cycle that he would get us smashed, break off the, the crustiness, the sword had more light shining through it. What is it to be more refined? Simply this, it's having... It's like a wider gap for the Holy Spirit to pour through. A more renewed mind so the Holy Spirit can pour through. <laughs> you know, he's that white light shining through the, the sword of the Spirit. Or the sword that, uh, the Word of God, the, 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 whatever you call that thing that we, that we are. He's the Word of God. But a living epistle is a living Word. Which is the Word of God coming through us living epistles 
Anyways, I don't know why he's talking about these things, man. It's, it is a wonderful thing to be smashed by the Word of God. Because <laughs> every time you get smashed, you come out of that smash season a little bit brighter, with filled with the Holy Spirit. Because you, if you're the light of the world, the light of the world is to have the Holy Spirit shining through you. If there's no Holy Spirit shining through you, and it's just scripture quoting, that's not the light of the world, I'm sorry to say. Because His light is Spirit. Anyways, my body trembles in holy awe of you, leaving me speechless, for I am frightened of your righteous judgments. Don't leave me to the mercies of those who hate me, for I love to do what is just and fair. Let me hear your promise of blessing over my life. Break me free from the proud oppressors. As a lovesick lover, I yearn for more of your salvation. I already have all the salvation I'll ever need. Good for you. As a lovesick lover, I yearn for more of your salvation and for your virtuous promises. Let me feel your tender love. I am yours. Give me more understanding of your wonderful ways. I need more revelation from your word to know more about you, for I'm in love with you. Lord, the time has come for you to break through, for evil men keep breaking your laws. Truly, your message message of truth means more to me than a vault filled with purest gold. Every word you speak, every truth revealed is always right and beautiful to me, for I hate what is phony and false. Oh, and that is the pinnacle of religious religion. Religion is phony and false. It doesn't reveal God. You know, it was it was almost like the knowledge of good and evil is what killed our first parents, Adam and Eve. It was knowledge without life. God said, eat from the tree of life. Is you know, <laughs> commanded Adam, right? From the tree you may freely eat or whatever, but don't eat from the knowledge of good and evil, because the day you eat it, you're gonna you're gonna die. It's filling ourselves, which is fruit. It's something that you partake, you taste it, and it goes into your... You get the nutrients from that. Filling ourselves with knowledge instead of filling ourselves with His... Filling ourselves with His Spirit, which is life. The Word of God is a doorway to go through and experience this life. God is life. We don't live by bread alone. We don't life by bread alone. <laughs> but by every word He speaks... I hate what is phony and false. I hate the religious spirit because it's trying to portray God as this angry villain, you know? <laughs> when you spend time in the glory, you know, wow, I just had a revelation. God's not mad. <laughs> All that wrath went on his son, Jesus Christ, so that we can enter into the joys that was set before him. I long to obey you. Your marvelous words are living miracles. Did you read that right? God, your marvelous words are living miracles. <laughs> your words bring such transformation to the mind, to the heart, to the bodies. You heal bodies as much as you heal hearts, as much as you heal souls. May you heal even more spirits and souls as we hear your words. God, I ask that you would just release such a powerful anointing through the entire body of Christ that souls will be healed. You know, it'd be, it'd be better to have a broken leg than a broken mind. You know what a broken mind is? A religious mind. Or even a mind that just dwells in depression. It just keeps on pulling on that spirit because it wants to feed it. It's disgusting. There's no depression in heaven, so let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Let it be in your earth as it is in heaven. Where there's no depression. If there's an illegal trespasser called depression in your earth, you have all third authority in heaven and in earth to cast it out in the name of Jesus. But you don't understand. Let the spirit of understanding be your understanding, not the understanding that comes through experiencing depression. But you don't know what I've been through. 
he does. And he, it is for freedom that he has set you free. But I'm not free, I feel, but it is for freedom that he has set you free. Whose report are you going to believe? The devil's or God's? Whoever is born again, all things are made new. You mean even my mindset? Yeah, we need to go from glory to glory by ever beholding him so that his truth can chase out all the shadows. We need to work with him and contend against all these lies that, you know, cast down every wicked imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Cast it down? Who casts it down? Does God do it? Cast down every wicked imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You cast it down by choosing to believe his words more than the words of the atmosphere and the lies, or even if it's a, a lie mixed with an atmosphere of Satan. Because that's what Satan used on Jesus to tempt him in the wilderness was a scripture with an atmosphere of lies. He used a scripture with an atmosphere of a religious devil to tempt Jesus. How much more is he going to use the same tactic to tempt us into remaining depressed, full of anxiety, full of fear? He'll use something that happened that's true in our life and that fear connected to it and we'll think, oh my gosh. And then you speak that out instead of speaking the word of God out. That destroys that. That's how you cast it down. You speak the truth. And his word is truth. That's for somebody out there. Your marvelous words are living miracles. It's going to take a miracle for me to be free. Well, it's his marvelous words are living miracles. No wonder I long to obey everything you say. Break open your word within me until revelation light shines out. Those who open hearts, those with open hearts are given insight into your plans. <laughs> I open my mouth and inhale the word of God because I crave the revelation of your commands. <laughs> Look at the size of this Bible, man. This is called the word, the 26 translations. I was, good. I was thinking about reading the entire book. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it in one live stream or something. <laughs> but let's inhale it. I open my mouth and inhale your word of God. <laughs> I'll be a fool for Christ's sake. I don't care. I don't really care what I look like before men as long as I look like Jesus before my Heavenly Father, which is me being crucified with Him. So, hallelujah. Uh, one time I was in a meeting. <laughs> Man, I'm so messed up right now. I was a brand new believer, probably my first year in the Lord, and I had I had my arms outstretched, you know, like a cross, kind of like that. And we were worshiping, and as I was worshiping, I saw a vision of Jesus hanging on the cross. My heart just melted, you know, the tears, like oh, he loves me so much. And then I took a closer look at the at the at who was on the cross there. I thought it was Jesus, but it was me. I'm like, oh, no, oh, no. I put my arms down. I'm like, God, forgive me. Forgive me. Oh, man, I can never compare myself to you. Or I, I, I don't, oh, God, forgive me for thinking that thought. And then uh, and I kind of go back into worship like that. I start, I stretch my arms again. And I see Jesus again on the cross. I'm like, oh, I love you so much. Thank you so much for doing that for, for me, Jesus. And then it switched to me again on the cross. Then I put my arms down. Oh, forgive me, God. What is wrong with my mind? Forgive me, God. That's you on the cross, not me. And then later on, he's like, Chris, you are so dull of heart to understand the mysteries. The reason that I can show you visions and revelations is because you are crucified with me. The reason you can't hear my voice is because you're crucified with me. And the life of you hearing my voice is because you're crucified with me so that my voice, you can't hear my voice because you're risen with me. Those who are crucified with Christ can hear the voice of Christ. The Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God and reveals it to us. Not just the apostles, not just the prophets, 
the superheroes wearing Christian capes. For anyone who will just deny themselves to have him. That's the ingredient. It's just him. It's all about him. Christianity. Christ. It's first and foremost in eanity. There's no Christianity without Christ. It's i anity. And that I needs to get crucified. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so I was very slow. And then I was realizing something like, man, if you want to have more experience God more, if you want to have the abiding presence of Jesus, just be like Zacchaeus, who just climbed up into a sycamore tree and wanted to see Jesus for who he was. And then Jesus showed up to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, come off the cross or come down from the tree, so to speak. For today I must abide at your house. Wait a second. These, you mean these, these revelations and visitations and abiding presences comes through sacrificing our humanity to walk in your divinity? It's not beating myself up. It's just get out of here, Jesus. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. Get out of here. Let's go to Jesus. Let's read, let's read about the tribulation and Jesus, 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 did you go through tribulation? <laughs> Jesus, what are you doing? Let's play Candy Crush. Jesus, you want to play Candy Crush and listen to the Bible today? <laughs> Let's start a ministry. Get out of here. Let's go to Jesus. You be the minister, Jesus. I don't want anything but Jesus. That's false humility. Jesus. I don't care about any other opinion but his. But that's still false humility. You're trying. Jesus. <laughs> I don't care about any other word but the word of Jesus, which is anointed. Every other word, get under my feet. I don't have time for religious devils or even my own mind. Jesus, take that mind. We already laid it on the altar about an hour ago in this video. So I open my mouth and inhale the word of God because I crave the revelation of your commands. Turn your heart to me, Lord, and show me your grace. <laughs> you know what that is? That's the ability to see his face. The woman who was caught in adultery, she met Jesus. And he was full of grace and truth. He said, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. But when he said, go and sin no more, grace, love, was pouring out of his face to empower to walk in that command of going and sinning no more. What do you mean go and sin no more? We sin every day. <sighs> That's not what Jesus teaches. <laughs> but he empowered her to walk in that truth by the grace gushing out of his face. Go and sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you. If you love me, you will come. What does that say? If you love me, you will obey my commands. It's not a threat. It's the key to obeying his commands. There's no love. We'll, we'll go into our own way and want to, want to obey our own commands. But his words are our life. His words are our food. His words are what's holding the entire universe together. And it was hold our lives together in him. Turn your heart to me, Lord, and show me your grace like you do every one of your godly lovers. Godly lovers. There's the key to seeing his face in his grace. Prepare before me a path filled with your promises and don't allow me even one sin to have dominion over me. Remember, sin was crouching at the door in the beginning there and it desired him. There was a desire that was in sin that wanted to take him out. But you must overpower it. The only way to overpower sin is to be overpowered by God. Overwhelmed by God. And just locked 
in his heart and throw the key away. Actually, just let the fire of his love melt that key into your hands and just so it's no more. There's no more key, God. It's melted away and I'm stuck to you for eternity. <laughs> the Holy Spirit once said to me in worship, he said, we're going to be together forever. That made me cry. <laughs> Oh, man. Even when I just repeat his promises, something goes through my heart. We're going to be together forever. The spirit of truth told me that. Who never lies. And the presence I was in was so beautiful. I was looking at a at a CD cover that had a picture of a man's ring and his hands were raised in worship. And then the Holy Spirit said to me as a covenant promise that we're going to be together forever. And then I found it later on in the book of Ephesians that the Holy Spirit has given to us like an engagement ring. I'm in covenant with the most amazing person in the entire universe. I'm in covenant we're in covenant with the most beautiful person ever to exist. He's he just one look at him and all your your problems just melt off of you. One look at him and all the troubles, anything that can trouble you just goes poof. It's like everything of the worldliness just it feels so shallow and weak compared to just one look at you. And I couldn't even see his face. I just looked at him and I, and I said, God, look at all these houses as I began to walk with God. It's like they have the same light shining through the houses that's coming through you. I didn't say that, but now I think. It. And he said, he said to the body of Christ as I was walking with him in heaven, you are the light of the world. And I realized right there that that light of the world is him, is him shining through the temples of the Holy Spirit. And a city, a city is a many-membered body, a many-membered body of Christ. And a city that is set on a hill, a hill is a high place, resting in him. And a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. There's no shame in the glory. You cannot be hidden. You cannot hide things in darkness. You cannot be ashamed of the fear of man. You cannot be ashamed of anything. And he said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. So if we're in hiding, what are we hiding from? Those who were in bondage? God, send us to the darkest places to shine your light. To shine Holy Spirit wine <laughs> through the temples of the Holy Ghost. And then I got translated back into the meeting and I could focus back on the prophet guy. And we started prophesying over each other. It was fun. How do you get to a place like that? Worship. Crucified with Christ. It all started there. It all started where... And then I'd forgive me, God. I don't know anything. I'm like Chris, you're so slow. Don't you get it? The cross is like a doorway. <laughs> you don't hang there forever. You don't beat yourself up. You cross through, through Jesus Christ and His wounds, into the joy that was set before Him, the kingdom realm of heaven. He's bringing, he's bringing many sons into glory. Father, I will that they would behold me where I am. That they would behold my glory. John 17. God, the will of God is to see Jesus in his glory so that we can be changed from that glory. Have experiences with God. Some people downplay the experiences. Well, pfft. I can't help but talk about what I've seen and heard. Because those things have the power of His Spirit in them. And even if it's just like I was just sitting on my couch and I felt the presence of God. 
That's the testimony of Jesus. That is worth more than memorizing every single book on the earth in the brain. Because that was something that unlocks your heart to go to him. It's something you can meditate on in your bed and just, just experience the anointing again all over again. And it breaks you through into a new place so you can begin walking with God again. I'll be right back. I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> Four four four. <laughs> it's four forty four where I am right now. You know what that is, right? That's the glory. <laughs> See the time up there? Four four four. Hallelujah. Let's read the Bible real quick. We'll go to Ezekiel chapter forty four, verse four. How long am I doing this for? Is there anyone actually watching? With four people watching, and I just went to the bathroom. <laughs> Oh. oh, it opened up right there. That's crazy. Look at this. I don't know where my camera is. Anyway, just have to take my word for it. It opened right up to Ezekiel 44. Oh, man, that is funny. But we got to go to Ezekiel 44, verse 4. What am I, what am I doing? <laughs> oh, man. Ezekiel 44, verse 4. It's, yeah, the glory, right? Then... This is the 26th translation. Then he brought me to the way of the north gate before the house. And I looked and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Who's the house of the Lord? Oh, let's read it again with the mind of Christ now. Then he brought me the way. Who's that? Then he brought then brought he, oh, I can't talk. That's so hard to read right now. My air suits on heaven. I mean, shut up. Help me, Lord. Then the Lord, <laughs> then brought he me the way of the north gate. The north gate. We got to get a little bit higher in his glory, don't we? we get, let's lift our vision a little bit higher today. Before the house, and I looked. Are we looking at him? I'm sure we are. <laughs> if we're not looking at him, we're wasting our vision. And I looked, and behold, behold. Just be like that. Just behold him. Behold his pant leg, and don't let him go. Even though he makes as though he's going to go further. Just be holding on to him. If you're going further, you're dragging me with you. Behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. The glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. The glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. And I fell upon my face. Then he brought me by way of the north gate to the front of the temple. So he took me towards the northern gate in full view of the temple. Then he brought me the way of the north gates before the house. And I looked 
uh, Behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord, and I fell upon my face. Let the glory of the Lord fill the house of the Lord, God. Let the glory of the Lord fill the house of the Lord. And even though we can, we're not physically falling on our face, let us fall on our face so that we see nothing but the glory of the Lord filling the house of the Lord and nothing around us. There's no distractions. The glory of the Lord filling the house of the Lord. And let us fall on our face as we rise through the north gate to behold the Lord. We don't want anything else. We didn't hear, come here for knowledge. We came here to have a pure life. And the purest life that we could ever have is your life coursing through our veins. You are the glory. You are the way. You are the truth. You are the life. The, every word proceeding from your mouth is our food. It's our life. We hook our hearts into it. We hook our souls into it. We fill our minds with it as we lay on our beds. The words of life. I don't care what my neighbors think, even if I'm yelling. They need to hear what the Spirit is saying. Let the glory of the Lord fill the house of the Lord so that we can fall on our face and not see the distractions of disgrace, but lay in that place of perfect peace, perfect rest, perfect face-to-face -face grace of Jesus Christ. His heart beating in our chest. Because you're the best. Whoa, it's so light right now. So lighty. <laughs> I feel so lighty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> oh. Your words are a light to our path, God so filled with glory and peace and anointing so filled with truth so filled with the lightnings of God hallelujah prepare before me a path filled with your promises <laughs> and don't allow even one sin to have dominion over me rescue me from the oppression of ungodly men so that I can keep all your precepts let your shining face shine brightly on me your loving servant whoa Let your shining face shine brightly on me, your loving servant. Instruct me on what is right in your eyes, God. When I witness the rebellious breaking your laws, it makes me weep uncontrollably. Lord, your judgments reveal your righteousness and your verdicts are always fair. The motive behind your every word is pure. I struggled. God, why did you create hell? Who has ever struggled with that one? Some people have gotten so far as to say it doesn't exist. Well, then you're in opposition, opposition with the truth of Jesus Christ. It is written in the word that Hell was created for the devil and his angels. But I saw the motive. I was laying on my lunch break on my chair well, one day at work and I fell into a trance and saw the beginning of time. And when God created the heavens and the earth, it just came out of him. And it wasn't so much what was coming out of him. I saw him. I saw his motive. For creating everything. You know who God is? 
God is love. And I saw love, just all this stuff pouring out of love. He didn't create it with hidden motives. He didn't create it to like, oh man, these people are going to be tormented. He's a righteous God. You think... When he created the heavens and the earth and everything that is in them, he created everything out of the motive of pure, unconditional love. I saw it. No one can change my mind because I saw it and I felt his motives. It it was pure love just coming right out of him and all these beautiful things. He created the heavens and the earth so that he could populate it with man and angels to have communion so that he could pour his love into man and angels and his wisdom and his understanding and his counsel and his might and all the wonderful good things who God is good. He wants to pour all these things into them, us. And I saw it. His motives were pure. And then the rebellion came. I didn't see all that stuff. I just saw when he, because he knew I was struggling with it. And he showed me the truth by the spirit of everything that he created. He created it out of love. Because he wanted to fill everything with his love. He wanted to fill everything with his truth. (laughs) He wanted us to be in utter ecstasy of just being with him. Who he is, the reality, the truth of who he is. And so never had to question him again about that because I saw the motives why he created everything the enemy will try to twist everything and make God look like the bad person but the enemy is the bad one (laughs) he's the liar and the word twister that's why it says your judgments reveal your righteousness he had to bring these judgments towards the devil and his angels Because it reveals his righteousness and his justice. And your verdicts are always fair. It is written. If you love the truth, you'll accept that. The motive behind your every word is pure. Your teachings are remarkably faithful and true. I've been consumed with a furious passion to do what's right. All because of the way my enemies disrespect your laws. All the promises glow. All your promises glow with fire. That's why I'm a lover of your word. (sighs) Even though I've considered, I'm considered insignificant and despised by the world, I'll never abandon your ways. Your righteousness has no end. It is everlasting. It means you cannot measure his righteousness. Go ahead and take your measuring stick of how much you've tasted of God and then just throw it in the sea of forgetfulness and say, God, I'm starting over. (laughs) I've had this mind concept of how much of God can show up. You haven't showed up like you showed up with Paul and knocked him off of his high horse or his donkey. (laughs) When was the last time God showed up and just translated you out of this realm into his realm and never brought you back? When was the last time God just said, I am he, and then everyone just falls to the ground because of the power of God? When was the last time You saw somebody just levitate up into heaven like Jesus. When was the last time you saw Jesus pass through someone or somebody walk through somebody? (laughs) When was the last time you saw somebody walk on water? Throw your measuring stick away. It's like the most that I'll ever... I can only just feel God. Well, that's good. Lots of people, yeah, they just feel the presence of God. Some people don't even feel the presence of God because we have idols in our hearts that block us from seeing the living God. The pure in heart see God. It's written. What's my problem? Maybe I've focused too much on something else other than God. Maybe it's not even a sin, but it's like candy crush. 
Maybe it's I'm too focused on my religious opinion about what God can do in my life or in the lives of someone else. It could be anything. God, your motives were pure and holy every time when you created the heavens and the earth were made in your image. I ask you for the same purity to come into our hearts today so that everything that we do will be out of a pure motive. Pure motives in our heart, pure motives in our mind, and pure motives as our words speak things. Why do we make videos? <laughs> Why do we read the Bible? Why do we have a ministry? Why do we not have a ministry? Why do we do this? Everything, measure everything to the motives of our hearts, God. Judge our hearts. Be aggressive with us. So we won't be lukewarm and sin against you. How many people will shut the video off at that statement? Don't be aggressive with me. Be kind and gentle. Uh, you know, God is love. You know, fluffy with a little balloon. You know. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's just gonna take his sword of the spirit and pop your little balloon. <laughs> Let all the hot air of man pour out of there. And he'll blow his spirit into you and you can taste, see, and realize and understand that God, <laughs> he is a man of war, it's written in Psalms. <laughs> you know, if he's trampling on serpents and scorpions and getting his heel bruised, he likes to destroy oppression and lies in your life. People say that the truth hurts. Listen, the truth only hurts the deception and lies that you cling to and wrap around your hearts. That yeah, the truth hurts deception. It shouldn't hurt you. You're in the truth. <laughs> His word is truth. The word of God is a person. The logos that we read, we can step through those words into the person and have that person formed in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Remember Paul said, I, I travail until Christ is formed in you. It's like, how much of Jesus can we reflect into this world? It's like a contest of winning the race. Who can release the most grace in this life? You know, <laughs> it's not a competition. You want it to be a competition? <laughs> We're not looking at each other. We're only looking at each other to see Jesus in each other. If this is a little bit of godly competition, you know, like, like who can release the most glory into their city, you know? <laughs> and it's not that you get puffed up in pride because your city begins floating in the air. It's like, wow, that person's really crucified. I need to be a little bit more crucified in my life, have a little bit more of Jesus coming through my sanctified, crucified life. So that my city can float in the air like that, you know? <laughs> oh, I hear about those revivalists where they would come into a city and revival would just break through the city. There was a lot less demons manifesting back then. Now it's like we got to come together as the body of Christ. And if there's nobody else to come together with, just like get joined to Christ and he'll bring those people to you. Let's get back into this. The word. <laughs> I gotta go off into these. I love the rabbit trails. Some of the rabbit trails just <laughs> who knows where they go. You just gotta sometimes you just gotta get back into the word of God and get anchored again. <laughs> oh man. Jesus, thank you. Hallelujah. Go back one verse. Even though I'm considered insignificant and despised by the world, I'll never abandon your ways. Your righteousness has no end. Oh yeah. Take, throw that measuring stick away. Oh, Shabbat. <laughs> Your righteousness has no end. It is everlasting. And your rules are perfectly fair. Even though my troubles overwhelm me with anguish, I still delight and cherish every message you speak to me. That is a key right there. You have trouble? Look at this. Even though my troubles overwhelm me, it does happen. I felt that way before I started the video. And then I got absolutely intoxicated on him. 
His words just led to him. <laughs> Started bawling my eyes out, yeah. His words are like a doorway to him. He's amazing. I still delight. Even though my troubles overwhelm me with anguish, I still delight and cherish every message you speak to me. Give me more revelation so that I can live for you. For nothing is more pure and eternal than your truth. That's Psalm 119, verse 144. You know that 144 is a new song? I will sing a new song unto the Lord. He's made my fingers to fight. Psalm 144 is what I named my channel before I became Radical Man. It was called Psalm 144 Warrior. Because <laughs> I thought that's all it was going to be. I was just going just gonna to sing songs to Jesus. And, you know, he's the man of war through the warriors. <laughs> Warriors are lovers. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Shabba. Where am I? There, for there's nothing more pure and eternal than your truth. Answer my passionate prayer, O oh Lord. How long am I doing this video, man? Two and a half hours almost. We're almost at the end. Oh. Answer my passionate prayer, O oh Lord. And I'll obey everything you say. Save me, God, and I'll follow your every instruction. Before the day dawns, I'll be crying out for help and wrapping your words into my life. That's what we're doing right now. I lie awake every night pondering your promises to me. Oh, just pondering that anointing in those words. Just drink it in, in your heart. Oh, soothing. The soothing words of the Savior. Nothing like him. Lord, listen to my heart's cry, for I know your love is real for me. Breathe life into me again by the revelation of your justice. Here they come. These lawless rebels are coming near, but they are so far away from your laws. God, you are near me always, so close to me. Every one of your commands reveals truth. I've known all along how true and unchanging is every word you speak established. Forever. We're going to be together forever. Oh, God, I just pray that you would just circumcise everybody's ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. Look upon all my misery and come to my, come be my hero to rescue me. For I will never forget what you've revealed to me. Amen. Take my side and defend me in these sufferings. Redeem me and revive me just like you promised you would. The wicked are so far from salvation, for they could not care less about your message of truth. Your tender mercies are what I need, O oh God. Give, my, give me back my life again through the revelation of your judgments. Whoa, what is happening here? I have so many enemies who persecute me, yet I won't swerve from following your ways. I have so many angry people on Facebook, yet I'll keep posting daily. <laughs> so many people are angry at my videos on YouTube, Jesus. <laughs> but you seem to love make, <laughs> making them any way through me. <laughs> I get so drunk when I make these videos bad. <laughs> Hallelujah, man. I think it helps me more than the people who press play. <laughs> oh, he's amazing. Jesus is amazing. <laughs> Some people think that the greatest persecution is a comment on Facebook or YouTube. <laughs> he used to get sawed in half in the Old Testament, you know? <laughs> I don't have people showing up to my house with rifles. Well, actually, they did, but not at my house. It, uh, it, it, <laughs> they would show up in these meetings with guns and bring out the sinners, you know? How <laughs> we take them to jail? We didn't have enough power to cast the devils out back then. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> so, the, so the leaders of the church would call the cops and drag these guys out. <laughs> <laughs> Police help! We got a demon possessed man here with a knife! Get him out of here! 
<laughs> oh man, it was it was hilarious in the days of small beginnings, not knowing anything. But you realize how protected you are. One time I was worshiping God, and oh, I saw shakas. And this guy came charging at me, and he stopped two feet in front of me. And then he took off and ran away. And I told him to stop because he felt the presence of God. <laughs> I had nothing until he showed up and stopped and then ran away from me. And then he got born again. I was like, that's just God showing a little bit of grace. Because he sees how pathetic our self-effort is. And sometimes he's like, you know what? Hey, man, these guys are trying to worship me in spirit and truth. You're disturbing the meeting there, sinner. You better get born again and worship with them. <laughs> and he got born again. Oh. Other times, like, power hits me so hard, I, I go flying across the room and hit chairs and not even a bruise or a scratch. Same meetings. And uh, sometimes demons show up and I, I just kick my legs and all the unbelief, you know, just backs off like an atmosphere. I'm like, get out of here, demon. This is a place of holiness. <laughs> I lay on the floor with my mouth open and get rebuked by the leaders of the church. You can't do that. You're showing off. Am I? Oh, yeah. Okay. What, am I supposed to be leading the worship the team was playing? I was just hungry for God. <laughs> I got thrown out of the street churches. I got rebuked by all these other pastors and stuff because they wanted me to worship a certain way. Sorry for crying, okay? Oh my gosh. I just have an emotional problem, okay? I'm so in love with Jesus and my emotions just take get the best of me. I just, ah, I can't seem to control myself. I do have self-control, but I've, that just means that I don't have to like Give in to sin when it shows up. I mean, some religious people will say, well, self-control is being able to stop the Holy Spirit from moving in a meeting. <laughs> you know? You're laughing in the joy of the Spirit. Hey, that guy needs joy. That guy needs some self-control. He's too happy in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You need self-control, brother. <laughs> what do you mean? You want me to control? You want me to stop God? <laughs> No, self-control means you can stop your selfish nature and allow the Holy Spirit to do what He wants. Hallelujah, man. Oh, I feel stuff coming right. <laughs> That's how we used to measure the anointing in the meetings. How much stuff would come out of my nose? <laughs> I used to have to tie a rag to my guitar because we were worshiping and we go so deep in the Spirit that my nose would start dripping. Because it's written that out of your innermost being, rivers of living water would come out. <laughs> and my natural body would just kind of catch the waves of the Holy Ghost and go surfing right out of my nostril, <laughs> my eye sockets. <laughs> but the fruit was there. People would get saved. It was amazing. It was all, it was all, well, God told me to go there. So I told him to send me to the darkest places. And then he sent me to a place called Pain and Wastings. And the natural, it's called uh, Maine and Hastings, <laughs> the names of the streets. <laughs> but I found out real quick, it was pain and wastings, where everyone's in pain and they're all wasting away and they needed the light of the gospel to shine on them. And so God sent me and, and uh, I did my best to yield to the Holy Spirit. It was very wobbly, very weak compared to what he could have done <laughs> through someone more yielded to him. But he's just looking for someone whose heart is burning and ready and willing, doesn't care about their own life. <sighs> Maybe that someone's you. I have so many enemies who persecutes me, yet I won't swerve from following your ways. I grieve when I see how the faithless ones live, for they just walk away from your promises. Lord, see how much I truly love your instructions. So in tender kindness, breathe life into me again. The sum total of all your words adds up to absolute truth. Every one of your righteous decrees is everlasting. The powerful elite have persecuted me without a cause. <laughs> the powerful elite. <laughs> 
but my heart trembles in awe because of your miracle words. Every word God speaks is like miracle power wrapped up in a capsule of word. We just need to take the medicine of the word of God. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost just explode through our innermost being and out into the world so that we can be the true light of the world. Hallelujah. But my heart trembles in awe because of your miracle words. Your promises are the source of my bubbling joy. <laughs> bubbling joy. <laughs> Bub. <laughs> oh. Bub. <laughs> what is wrong with me? <laughs> Everything. The only thing right with me would be the, the presence of Jesus. <laughs> God, what's wrong with me? <laughs> Listen, every all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory. The only thing right with anyone is their lives being crucified so that Christ can live his life through them. Guaranteed, bub. <laughs> bub. <laughs> the revelation of your word thrills me like no one else. Like one who has discovered hidden treasure. We have his treasure in earthen vessels. But sometimes you just need to open the treasure chest of your heart and let the treasure just spill out. <laughs> True riches. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> My fingers drunk in the spirit. Despise. Despise every lie and hates every falsehood. I forgot the word I there. Maybe I got to crucify there for a second. Ha ha ha. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, we need to get the eye crucified, so that the true eye is a burning heart that sees Jesus. The eyes of our heart. I despise <laughs> eyes. <laughs> what is wrong with me, Jesus? <laughs> Everything except for you being, except for Christ in you, the hope of glory, you know. <laughs> Does he always talk to himself? Hey, I'm never alone with my principalities and powers of peace, okay? <laughs> I got a friend that sticketh closer than a brother is. <laughs> I despise every lie and hate every falsehood, for I am passionate about keeping your precepts. I stop to praise you seven times a day. Let's do it right now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord God Almighty. <laughs> praise God in the sanctuary. Praise God in the streets. Praise God in our house. Praise God on YouTube. Praise God wherever we meet. Hallelujah. All because your ways are perfect. There is such a great peace and well-being that comes to the lovers of your word. <laughs> and they will never be offended. <laughs> I don't know about this. This offends me right here. Nobody's this happy. <laughs> He's faking it. <laughs> what are you smoking, man? <laughs> oh man, I must be must be inhaling a glory cloud or something. So there's no high, there's no high like the Most High, and I'm in Him. You know that glory cloud of witnesses is probably just a hawk box near the throne. <laughs> you know, you try to put God in a box in the Old Testament and he'll kill you. <laughs> you remember that guy Uzzah, he's trying to steady the box? <laughs> God killed him. Get out of here, man. He wants the glory to spill out of the box into the earth. <laughs> he wants the glory to touch the earth. Sometimes the flesh needs to be crucified so the glory can just pour out and touch the earth. Get the eye crucified. Because <laughs> there is such a great peace and well-being that comes to the lovers of your word. They will never be offended. 
Everybody in religion's offended. Oh man, you ever read the Facebook posts? And I used to delete the YouTube um, comments. Uh, even today, there was another one. There was someone said it's the new age or something. And, and uh, who cares what the dead say? Let them come alive in the spirit of God. I can just feel the spirits of the dead attached to the words. Like psh, I'm not gonna pay attention to those. I just I gave a courtesy prayer though. <laughs> I like may may you be delivered of all the religious spirits in Jesus' name. <laughs> you know I was a little bit concerned. <laughs> I was a little bit concerned for your religiousness. <laughs> I wasn't offended, just concerned. <laughs> uh, as my Bible says, there is no such... <laughs> what? You know what it says. We're looking at the scriptures right now. Let's move on. Lord... I'm longing for more of your salvation, for I want to do what pleases you. I'm sure in the deep core of every religious person, including myself, this is the cry of our heart. <clears throat> we just want more of your salvation because we want to do what pleases you. That's why we, like Saul, get mad and want to murder all the other Christians with our words. <laughs> we get mad and angry because we're not secure in our Father. Because we don't know our Father yet through experience. We've only known Him through what's written and through the uh, teachings of other angry Christians. <laughs> but your word does say, this guy was longing for more salvation and he wanted more to things that pleases you, God. So I pray that you would grant this prayer to everyone, God, who's mad. That you would teach us how to walk in what is pleasing to you and not pleasing to our flesh. In the name of Jesus. My... In there, your <clears throat> my love for your ways. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm not always like this. Let you know, just rewind the tape. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> just rewind the cassettes. <laughs> Cassette, rewind the video. Oh. <laughs> and you'll see the progression of how we got to the <laughs> Ezekiel 44, verse 4 level. We went to the north gate. <laughs> oh my god, my lord, and my god. My love for your ways is indescribable. <laughs> In my inner, innermost being, I want to follow them perfectly. <laughs> I, I will keep your instructions and follow your counsel. All my ways are an open book before you. God, let our ways be Yahweh. And nothing less. Lord. <laughs> oh, I gotta blow my nose. No, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Let it drip. <laughs> oh, I feel so lightheaded right now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I think my brain just kind of kind of leaked out of my nostrils and then blew it into the washroom somewhere. <laughs> it's okay. I got a replacement. <laughs> we have the mind of Christ because he knew. He knew what was going to happen <laughs> when we put all of our thoughts and focus and attention on him. <laughs> Lord, 
Listen to my prayer. <laughs> I've been praying for two hours, you know? <laughs> oh, I'm losing, I'm gonna lose all two of my followers. <laughs> oh man, I feel so lightheaded. <laughs> Listen to my prayer. <laughs> it's like a sacrifice I bring to you. <laughs> it's like a sacrifice. <laughs> I'm sacrificing my sadness for your gladness. <laughs> oh. need a seatbelt. <laughs> the seatbelt buckle of truth is like a seatbelt. <laughs> to the throne room of grace. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't forget to breathe on the earth, brother. <laughs> written we're not gonna get offended <laughs> oh. it's like a sacrifice I bring to you oh. oh I almost blew my nose on my glasses cleaner I don't want to do that I know we see through a veil darkly but I don't want to see through a veil darkly on my glasses Lord hear my prayer <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. I must have more revelation of your word, Lord. I must. Holy. <laughs> Oh, I can feel the neighbors squeaking the floor. Uh, uh. They're gonna come down and literally. Can I have someone you have, brother? <laughs> yes. Glad you came. Uh, uh. Here, have some. Uh, let it leak through the floor. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. <laughs> It's free. <laughs> oh. Let us continue our reading. Oh. Lord. Lord. <laughs> Listen to my prayer. <laughs> <laughs> we all pray that, don't we? <laughs> oh, except for we usually have the like word help, Lord, <laughs> help, and He sent the helper, you know, <laughs> so that He can listen to our prayer. <laughs> oh, this is really hard. All right. <laughs> it's like a sacrifice <laughs> I bring to you. I must have more revelation of your word. Take my, take my words to heart when I ask you, Lord. Rescue me. Just like you promised. I offer my joyous praise. Oh, that's what happened. We praise the Lord seven times. Duh. Careful when you praise the Lord. <laughs> you might get hit with some fruit. Because Mary said, 
My soul magnifies the Lord. Oh, you might magnify some fruits. <laughs> For all that you've taught me. Oh, your wonderful world. Your wonder. <laughs> You're wonderful, <laughs> full words will become my song of worship. Of everything you commanded is perfect and true, your hands of strength and favor upon me. What did I just read? <laughs> my spirit understands it, don't worry about it. For I've made my choice to follow your ways. I wait for your deliverance. <laughs> Faster than DoorDash. <laughs> You'll dash through the door of your heart <laughs> with the deliverance of the sacrificial whatever. I can't remember the scriptures five verses back there, but it's there in the... Uh, Oh, in the, uh, in the archives. Not even invigorate my life so I can praise you even more. Oh, it's so risky. Invigo, inv, go, or... Eight invigorate <laughs> in v go are eight my life so I can praise you even more. Eat my life, go ahead. That's why I do. may your <clears throat> and may your truth be my strength. I'll never forget what you've taught me. But when I wander off and lose my way, come after me, for I'm your beloved. Amen. I don't know how to stop the video. <laughs> I paused it. Oh, is it? <laughs> Help, Lord. <laughs>